Agricultural Revolution. How to feed eight billion people using LED lamps? They say out of disasters can come miracles. On March the 11th, 2011, at 2:46 p.m., a large earthquake struck off Japan's northeastern coast, setting off a large tsunami and wrecking the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. It became known as the Great East Japan Disaster. The region is also a big farming community, meaning there were food shortages as a result. Botanist Shigeru Shimamura and his company Merai used the disaster as a catalyst to test his theory on the viability of indoor industrial farming. The indoor farm is located in a 25,000 square foot former semiconductor plant that was vacated after the Tohoku, Japan earthquake in 2011. The farm factory can yield up to 10,000 heads of lettuce a day thanks to the strict clean room environment. Soil and air temperature, humidity and light are all controlled to exacting specifications. Outdoor farming is fraught with risks. For example, too much sunlight can stunt a crop's yield. But in this farm, the special LEDs developed by General Electric can be controlled to give off the amount of light most conducive to photosynthesis. Meaning, instead of 50% of all crops being discarded, less than 1% gets thrown away. Also, the amount of water used in irrigation is greatly reduced, and the number of harvests can be four times the normal rate. Let me say that once more: ten thousand heads of lettuce every day, rain or shine. Mirai and GE are looking to expand to Hong Kong and Russia in the near term, with the goal of expanding to the point where the veggie factories can be used to conserve both land and water worldwide. Growing vegetables in an innovative way can make you very rich. San Francisco startup Plenty, which specializes in vertical farming, has secured 200 million U.S. dollars from investors. Among the investors are Japanese media corporation SoftBank, Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google, and Amazon. Plenty's farming design allows plants to grow vertically on the sides of a tall tower. Lights are also arranged vertically to give plants as much exposure as possible. The vertical farm can grow up to 350 times more produce than conventional farming methods in the same amount of space. Plenty is planning on building indoor vertical farms covering an area as large as five acres, which is roughly the size of larger supermarkets such as Walmart. The vertical farms will be built next to large cities in order to reduce delivery times of the produce. Plenty was founded in 2013 and has offices in San Francisco and Wyoming. The firm plans to distribute its vertically grown food starting this fall. Solar-powered floating farms could help feed the world. Barcelona-based company Forward Thinking Architecture has developed a solar-powered floating farm system that could ease growing global food demand. Smart floating farms, or SFF, was inspired by traditional grid-shaped fish farms in Asia. Each SFF is 200 meters wide and 350 meters long. Roughly the size of six football fields, they can be connected to form a cluster of modules. Photovoltaic panels are installed on the top level to harvest sunlight for electricity, and it has rainwater collectors for irrigation purposes. Other renewable energy technologies, such as micro wind turbines, may also be added. The second level is a greenhouse for the vegetables, which are grown without soil under the hydroponic system. The plants receive natural light from the skylight opening. The ground level is used as a fish farm on the open sea and features a fish egg hatchery, a slaughterhouse, and a storage room for the fish. By using farms in nearby waters as a food source, the SFF can help reduce reliance on imported food. All the modules are centrally controlled by software via cloud technology. The production data will be analyzed and can be used to make comparisons on the food needs for specific cities. Each SFF is estimated to have a maximum production of just over eight tons of vegetables and slightly over 1.7 tons of fish per year. The floating farms are ideal for densely populated cities near coastal areas, such as Los Angeles, New York, Tokyo, Singapore, and Hong Kong. As the world's population increases, food demand is expected to increase 50% by 2030 and 70% by 2050. South Korea and Egypt are building an agricultural city in the desert. 
Two unlikely partners are in a scientific collaboration that could see a desert turn green within the next half year. South Korea and Egypt are teaming up to build an agricultural city in the North African nation's Katara Depression sinkhole. The six-month, $10 billion project will see 50,000 greenhouses constructed by Egyptian workers and managed by Korean experts. Several solar and desalinization plants are expected to be built at the site. The project will also see an attempt to produce food and the sugar alternative stevia. If the plan is successful, it could be seen as a model for future anti-desertification projects. Indoor vertical farm near New York City uses less water and produces more. The world's largest indoor vertical farm is well on its way to producing millions of pounds of food a year while using less water. Last December, Aero Farms Incorporated secured $20 million of venture funding, paving the way for its 70,000 square foot facility in Newark, New Jersey. Now the company is on track to produce 2 million pounds of food a year. The facility houses an efficient aeroponic vertical farm system that uses 95% less water than conventional commercial field farms and 40% less than hydroponic farms. The farms use no sunlight or soil. Instead, the plants are housed on shelves and sprout out of a cloth medium made of post-consumer recycled plastic. Each cloth takes 24 plastic water bottles out of the waste stream. An aeroponic system mists the plant's roots with water, nutrients, and oxygen. The closed system allows the farm to use less water. An LED lighting system is programmed to create a specific light recipe for each plant. This gives the greens the exact spectrum, intensity, and frequency they need for photosynthesis in the most energy efficient way possible. The programmed lights allow farmers to control the size, shape, texture, color, flavor, and nutrition of the foods produced. The cloth medium separates the plants from the nutrient-rich mists, allowing for fresh, clean, and dry produce to be harvested. Once harvested, the cloth medium can be fully sanitized and reused on new crops. By using the aeroponic and LED systems, farmers can monitor plant growth and tweak and track changes to allow for further improvements to the system. The AeroFarm system is also customizable. The company hopes to build farms in different sizes and configurations to grow food in varied locations with the most efficient yield per square foot, no matter the space. AeroFarms aims to have 25 facilities around the world in five years. The company's farms can each rotate among 22 varieties of crops a year. World's largest vertical farm set to open in New Jersey. The largest indoor vertical farm in the world is set to open in Newark later this year. The farm will reportedly be able to grow 2 million pounds of pesticide-free produce each year. A 69,000 square foot vertical farm is being built on the site of an old steel factory in the Ironbound neighborhood in Newark, New Jersey. In a vertical farm, the plants are rooted in reusable microfleece cloth and do not require soil. The crops are sprayed by nutrient-rich mist and illuminated by LED lights. The vertical farm is 75 times more productive per square foot and uses 95% less water than a conventional open field farm. The $30 million renovation project will bring jobs to Newark and fresh food to New Jersey. The project hopes to create 78 jobs in the city by the end of 2015. Genius device harvests water from desert air. Certain parts of the world still lack access to safe water, but a new contraption made by a team from UC Berkeley and MIT might soon change that. The system consists of metal organic framework, or MOF crystals, pressed into a thin sheet and placed in a chamber between a solar absorber and a condenser plate. MOFs are a combination of organic and inorganic materials in a tightly packed matrix. Specific uses depend on the type of combination used. While some moths absorb gas, this particular one excels at absorbing water. The chamber is left open at night, allowing air to diffuse through the porous crystals and water to attach to its interior surface. During the day, sunlight heats up the water molecules in the moth, turning them into vapor that then condenses and is collected below. When tested under the same conditions as arid and desert areas, the prototype managed to pull 2.8 liters of water over a 12-hour period. The device is a significant first step, but still holds much room for improvement. 
For now, the team is working on making it better, particularly in terms of efficiency and output. Drones sow the seeds for a greener future. Scientists in India plan to turn a difficult-to-reach area near Bangalore into a lush green forest by dropping seeds from drones into the soil. The first drone seed bombing experiment took place on June 5th to mark World Environment Day. Researchers from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore will drop seed bombs on an arid hill range north of the city. They plan to cover 10,000 acres, an area equivalent to more than 5,500 soccer fields. Seeds from native species, such as tamarind, will be wrapped in balls of manure and soil before being dropped from the sky. Drones equipped with cameras will be used to geotag the area and monitor the progress of the project. Around a dozen native tree species have been chosen for the project, which scientists hope will help a forest flourish and encourage wildlife to return to the area. According to scientists, goats that graze on saplings, the dry climate and climate change are some of the biggest challenges to the project. Even in space, you have to eat your greens. NASA hopes its astronauts will be able to keep up their veggie intake on future missions to the Moon or Mars, thanks to a greenhouse project it's working on with the University of Arizona. The prototype lunar greenhouse is cylindrical, measuring 18 feet in length and more than 8 feet in diameter. The garden uses a hydroponic system, in which water enriched with nutrient salts flows continuously through the roots of the plants. Carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts can be absorbed by the plants. In return, the plants produce oxygen for the astronauts through photosynthesis. The exchange forms a bioregenerative life support system. NASA's Veggie Plant Growth System was the first fresh food growth experiment on the International Space Station. The space agency hopes to provide a more sustainable approach to long-term exploration on the Moon, Mars and beyond. Mexican chemical engineer Sergio Rico has invented a water-absorbent powder designed for use in times of extended droughts. When potassium polyacrylate comes into contact with water, it transforms from a white powder into a clear, jelly-like substance. Once potassium polyacrylate absorbs the water, it can be stored within the gel for up to a year without evaporating. The water within the potassium polyacrylate will only be absorbed by the soil when a plant's roots consume it. This water absorbent polymer or solid rain is made up of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and potassium. Farmers in Mexico have found their crop yield increase by 300% with the help of solid rain.